What do you actually get from a 70 inch TV under $700 or a 65 inch TV under 500? That's a whole lot of screen for not much money, but is it any good? Well, today we're gonna find out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you follow us, and if you don't, I think you should, then you know we just got done reviewing some of the most impressive and expensive TVs to come out in 2021. Today we're going hard in the opposite direction. We're gonna dig into the Vizio V-Series TV, Vizio's most affordable TV line, which shows a lot of promise for those who want a big screen on a budget. There's a lot of competition in this space now, TCL and Hisense for sure, but even less expensive sets from Samsung and LG. How does this one stack up? We're gonna quickly unbox and set up this TV, talk about what the TV does and doesn't have for this price point, take some measurements, and then land firmly into picture quality territory to get a feel for what you can expect if you buy this TV. A lot to get knocked out, so let's get to it. Before I crack open this box though, I'm curious. How many of you are on the hunt for a budget TV this year and where do you plan on putting it in your home? Leave me a comment about that down below and while you're down there, please click like and subscribe because we're gunning for a million subs and I can't do it without your help. And as always, we have shopping links to the products we covered down in the description if you'd like to help us out that way. My business here is done. Let's crack this thing open. And just like that, we're all set up. Now on the back of this TV, you're gonna find some pretty basic settings. You've got a composite video input, some analog audio out, an optical audio out, ethernet connection, that kind of thing. On the digital side of things, you've got three HDMI inputs and a USB input. Those three HDMI inputs are not gonna support HDMI 2.1, it's HDMI 2.0B. And for that reason, you're also only gonna get ARC instead of eARC. Jumping to the front of the TV here, it's a decent looking set. I mean, the bezels are a little on the chunky side, but I'm not shocked at this price point. Everything else is just kind of basic. So let's turn it on. All right, so we've turned on the TV and this setup process, which is mostly automated, is gonna take about like 10 and a half minutes. So my suggestion to you is just to say go and then go make yourself a cup of coffee or bowl of soup or I don't care what you do. Just, you know, walk away because it's not worth sitting around watching it happen. When you come back, you will have to accept some terms and conditions. And again, this is gonna have everything to do with the kind of sponsored content that you see at the top of the SmartCast screen. So. Beware what you're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and accept it all just so I can skip through this stuff. And ultimately we land here at the main SmartCast screen. First thing I'm gonna do is go into the menu, hit the picture settings, and it looks like this TV ships in Vivid, which is interesting. I guess that makes sense. Maybe the target audience for this TV would want the brightest setting they could get. I'm gonna move that to calibrated because it's way more accurate. It changes the color temperature to warm, uh, which is a good starting point. Backlight is set at 100 already. That's interesting, brightness at 50, that's pretty typical. Uh, by the way, this TV does have full array local dimming, but it's a pretty limited system. It's only got about 12 zones of local dimming, so not very advanced on that. Going to advanced picture settings, the backlight control is on, that indicates that local dimming is activated. Film mode, this appears to be the only control that we have available for motion smoothing. There is no other motion menu that I can find which I find very interesting. I mean, it is a basic TV, but like I really wanna have a little bit more control over things. My presumption here is that if you go into something like the sports mode, uh, that's going to go ahead and enable some motion smoothing to the degree that this TV may do that in order to get better, smoother sports. But again, let's go back to calibrated and start from there. Now, before I bounce out of the menu, I wanna go into the audio section because for one thing, I was wrong, I know, it happens. I said earlier that there's no eARC on this TV, that is not true. Turns out there is, uh, even though that's not on the spec sheet, uh, eARC can be turned on in the audio menu if you want to. Also, it's going to ship with virtual X surround sound on by default, not a big fan, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off surround sound uh, just to get a more straightforward sound quality out of the TV. Okay, so here's the thing. I know I said earlier in this video that I was gonna take some measurements, but I've decided not to do that. There is just really no point in doing it whatsoever. I did run through several test patterns that I'm super familiar with, switched between SDR and HDR. And the fact of the matter is, I didn't see a difference between any of it. And in terms of color accuracy, look, no calibrator is gonna come and adjust this TV. But you pull the thing out of the box and you just start using it. That's where this TV is at. So in terms of picture quality, it's not special. 
that's the bottom line. It's just simply not a particularly special TV. It does a very basic job of displaying images on the screen. So I guess what I'm getting to is if you have a really old TV, like I'm talking about CRT old, or maybe you have a really old CCFL backlit LCD TV and you haven't made the jump into an LED backlit TV yet, you don't want to spend a lot of money. You want a lot of screen real estate. And maybe this is going in your basement or your garage or something. This TV is fine. It's an inexpensive way to get a large screen TV. However, if this is a TV that you're going to watch on the regular, the bottom line is the picture quality is not good enough to be happy for a long period of time. Not when you can take a step up to even Vizio's own M series, which at 65 inches is about $220 more. I would say you get so much more out of that extra 220 bucks. It would be worth saving to step up to the M series. It's a significantly better TV. This TV just doesn't, I mean, it says it does HDR, HDR 10, Dolby Vision, HLG, but it doesn't have the brightness to back that up. 400 nits, which is like the best this TV is doing, I think, is simply not enough to make that hit. I get that we review a lot of really high-end TVs, so I'm trying to keep everything in perspective here. This is not a high-end TV. But I am thinking back to some of the high senses and the TCLs and even other Vizios that I've watched. But I think it's really worth saving up a little bit of money to get a whole lot more picture quality out of something a little more expensive. I also have to mention in all of this that, you know, the panel lottery is definitely a thing. But in this particular case, the screen that I got has some dirty screen effect going on just a little bit. In the corners, there's definitely some vignetting. And then there's these very conspicuous bright bars on the right and left hand side. That's not the backlighting system. That is just simply the screen that's causing that. So keep that in mind when you're buying a TV at this level, the kind of quality assurance that you might get with a more expensive TV may not really be here. Now I can't get out of here without talking about gaming for a minute because like gaming is huge these days. And we've been looking at that on a lot of TVs. Also Vizio advertises this TV as having its pro gaming engine. Now it did automatically recognize that it was an Xbox when I plugged it in, so that's cool. Interestingly though, it picked the bright mode and I'm not sure why it would do that. So I went ahead and moved it to game. I checked pro gaming engine and really the only thing you can do is select an HDR enhancement option and also auto low latency mode, which basically means that it's gonna drop into its lowest input lag possible. Also, I will mention that it's turned off the backlight control or the full array local dimming feature, probably again, in order to get the lowest lag possible. But in terms of gaming features, that's really it. And in terms of HDR gaming, again, there's not really an HDR aspect to this TV, I feel, so that's not really a selling point either. Really, you're looking at getting auto low latency and the low input lag that comes with it, and that's pretty much it. So where do we land with the Vizio V series? Like I said, I think if you're looking for a very basic TV, one that you're not gonna be watching every day yourself, something where you just want a big screen and can throw the game on, you know, maybe it goes in your basement, maybe out in your garage or uh, your man cave or she shed, whatever you got. This TV could totally work. It's very inexpensive and you can get a lot of screen real estate for not a lot of money. But keep in mind that if this is gonna be your main TV, I'd go ahead and upgrade if you can. It's worth saving a little bit to get a whole lot more. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Good job, welcome to the club. So you know we're shooting to hit that million subscriber mark and that will allow us to do even more amazing things here on the channel. But my question for you watching right now is, what should we do to celebrate when we hit that milestone? What would you like to see? Anything you can think of, leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And here's two other videos that I think you'll like.